Once, traveling at night, I fell asleep in the passenger seat of a moving car, lulled by the noise and the motion into an illusion of serene weightlessness. Then the driver took a bridge too fast, and I woke to see the world spinning outside the car windows, and the sickening sensation of falling at high speed. That is as close as I can come to describing what I experienced. But it falls woefully short. When confronted with the impossible, the rational mind will grope for the logical. Perhaps I had stumbled onto the set of a cinema company filming a costume drama of some sort. Well, I'm not the man I once was. I came to Scotland to fulfill a soldier's responsibility to serve my king and protect my country. Instead, I find myself the watchman of a squalid, ignorant people prone to the basest superstition and violence. The darkness has grown within me. A hatred of the very world itself. I find myself doing such things. Reddish work. Until I no longer recognize the man I've become. You are not the first soldier to be changed by combat. The fact that you can admit to it is yet another hopeful sign. Of what? You say that buried within is a decent man. A man that can still choose right over wrong. I believe that part of you lives still. It would be pretty to think so. You cannot undo the things you've done. But it is not too late to win back your humanity. You can choose to be the man you wish to be. Do you think it possible 
that one day I might gaze upon my own reflection and not be filled with loathing. I believe a man with your insight and self-knowledge can do whatever he wants. The rehabilitation of Black Jack Randall. You can make a fortune betting against that. Perhaps I should begin by having you escorted to Inverness. <sighs> I've made you happy. Yes, you have. An odd sensation. A beginning, perhaps. I agree. Corporal Hawkins. Mm. Mrs. Beecham and I <clears throat> require your assistance. Captain Randall, you have my deepest gratitude. <gasps> Darkness, madam. Darkness is where I belong. I need no sympathy from you, and you'll get none from me. Hi. James Alexander Malcolm Mackenzie Fraser. Take thee, Claire Elizabeth Beecham, to be my wedded wife. I have and to hold from this day forth, for better, for worse, for sin and health, till death us do part. My Claire Elizabeth Beecham. Take thee, James, Alexander, Malcolm Mackenzie, Fraser, to be my wedded husband. Have and to hold from this day sickness and in health. To death as to part. Do you have a ring? Benedict Domine Analum Hunc, quem nos in tuo nomine benedicimus, in nomine Patris, Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. What exactly did the words mean? You are blood of my blood and bone of my bone. I give you my body, that we two may be one. I give you my spirit. Till our life shall be done. You make us your bride. to understand your position in this our third encounter. I fully intend by any means necessary to discover both your true nature and the secrets that you hold. Perhaps you should ask the Duke of Sandringham. <coughs> oh dear me, I do hope that won't stain.
dangerous gambit to be sure. But his reaction told me that Frank and the Reverend were right in their speculation. I suspect uh, your ancestor had a patron, uh, a prominent and powerful man who could protect him from the censure of his superiors. Possibly, but it would have to have been someone very high up in the hierarchy of the day to exert that kind of influence. The Duke of Sandringham? The Duke of Sandringham? Blackjack was able to commit his various crimes in the Highlands because he was being protected by a powerful man. And the cost of such protection was always silence and fidelity. What do you know of the Duke? Really, Captain? Must you be so obtuse? Is it not clear by now that you and I are both in the employ of the same great and powerful man? That is impossible. He would have told me. <laughs> because he tells you all his secrets. You must be a very special officer indeed. Madam, I will simply send a message to Sandringham asking him. Excellent idea. I'm sure he'd be most pleased at your skill and acumen at uncovering my identity. Or perhaps your disruption of the Duke's carefully laid plans will not be rewarded. Perhaps he will be displeased and take measures to terminate your special relationship. Withdraw the protection to which you've become accustomed and thus leave you at the mercy of your superior officers and local authorities. No, the wisest course of action would be to allow me to continue my mission and give the Duke no indication of how close you came to disrupting his efforts on behalf of the King. You mean, of course, his, uh, his wife's efforts? His wife? The Duchess. You've met her. Oh, we've never had the pleasure. Really? Well, an agent of the Duke is an agent of the Duchess. But we have been in communication. Communication by letter? A messenger, yes. With the Duchess. That's who we're talking about, isn't it? Yes. That is, uh... That is who we're talking about. But of course, um... The Duke has never been married. Gentlemen, upon my count, five paces, if you please. One, two, three, four, five, halt, mark your places. Combatants, take your positions. Combatants, you will fire upon the dropping of the handkerchief. Are you ready? Aim your weapons. Steady, steady. Does the Duke of Sandringham offer his apology for non-payment of debt? I do. And does Andrew MacDonald accept said apology? I do. Then this affair is concluded. Let's drink to friendship. Honor observed and restored. Honor is a poor substitute for coin, I, I for one refuse to drink with mollies. Off with you. Go and couple together like the filthy dogs you are. Sir, order your boys to hold their tongues. Let it go, lads. Mind your manners. Father, the man rents a great house but cannot pay an honest debt. Tell me, is the Duke's fat arse as comforting as a woman's cunny? Aye, 
Is yours stretched like some crone's sagging teats? I said enough, you whelps. Halacha yerst. Come, come, Jamie. Let's not descend to calling of names. Aye, ah, into the woods you go. To find a fallen log to bend each other over. Was well, it true the McDonald's learn of love by rutting with their mother? <laughs> <laughs> Tell your wife it wasn't my fault, and, and now I'm afraid I must be on my way. A duel is one thing, a common brawl, quite another. Concern yourself not. I shall honor my side of the bargain. And, um, She was not Mrs. Fraser when we first became acquainted. She was Mistress Beecham then. Go on. I came to her for a potion. To open Jamie Fraser's heart to my own. I'm sorry, it's... It's painful to speak about. I was the one, you see, who Jamie was meant to marry. But she took the potion herself. Did you? Can cop suck a potion? It, it wasn't an actual potion. I was just trying to help her. She hexed Jamie and turned him away from me. She stole him. This is nonsense. I didn't hex anybody. Silence! Clearly, she's a jealous young lass with a broken heart. Aye. My heart was broken. And when I confronted her, she struck me. Did you, in fact, strike this woman? She put an ill wish under my bed and then tried to seduce my husband. It was the love of my life. This girl is the reason that I'm here at all. She fabricated a note from Mrs. Duncan summoning me, all the while knowing that the warders were coming to make an arrest. These crocodile tears are just further evidence that she's trying to get me out of the way to she's get She's still rambling, Mrs. Fraser. You're an embarrassment to yourself. Call the next witness. His reverence, Father B. The only way to keep you and Lallybrook safe is to come under my protection as War Chieftain of the Clan Mackenzie. Lallybrook. So that's what this is really about. You want to control the Fraser lands? What you've wanted all along. That's why you kept Jamie away for years, for telling him his sister bore Randall's child. Because you were hoping for an opportunity to bring them under the Mackenzie banner before the rightful Laird could return. All of that may be true. But it doesn't alter your position. Now, what would Jamie want you to do? He wouldn't want to be sleeping with his uncle. Hey, listen to me, listen to me. He loved you, yes, I know that. More than I suspected when I proposed your wed. Now he, he was a man of deep feelings. 
Don't you dare speak about him as if he were already dead! Now you think what you want of me, of my motives, or my politics, or even my honor. But you know, you know, Jamie. You know how he felt about Randall. If marrying me was the only way to keep you out of that bastard's hands, he would tell you to do it. Now, look me in the eye and tell me I'm wrong. How many men are there with you? What? How many? Ten. <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking. <laughs> but there is no way on earth that so few men can force their way into Wentworth prison. Jamie led only a handful of men when he rescued me at Fort William. What's the matter? Are you scared? You're not as good as him. I'll not be baited by you, Claire. You're blinded by love, wishing for things that can never be. Would you give up your dream of a Stuart king on the throne without trying? No. Well, I won't give up on Jamie without trying. You'll be dead before you get there. And what then? Then I'll marry you. If there's a chance that I can save him, then I have to try. But if I fail, or if he's already dead, I will marry you. I'll not force any of my men to go to their deaths. But I'll not stand in the way of any that choose to go. The prisoner to one of the dungeon cells. Rory McNeil. something else. You mean besides changing the future? I'm not sure I'm ready to hear it. I've been wondering how to tell you this. Matt assures me that once you're underway, you'll be too seasick to have a conversation. I'm pregnant. But you 
said you were unable to. Apparently I was wrong. Because they're fun. Well, are you happy? I never thought I'd be able to see such a thing again, but... Yes. 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 I'm very happy indeed, Sassana. And if I'd kept my eyes shut, I could have almost touched the edges of oblivion. But I'd made a promise, and had to keep it, even if it meant living a life I no longer wanted. He was gone. They were all gone. The world I'd left only moments ago was now dust. Mom. Are you all right? Mom. Do you speak English? What year is it? The year. What year is this? I yes. 1948. Who won? Who won the Battle of Culloden? Do you not feel... Well, perhaps I could take you... Tell me! Tell me who won the Battle of Culloden! Tell me now! And the British! Cumberland and the British! You let me go! <sighs>
et les blancs Turak. Vos prières ont été exaucées. Excuse me? I am told you are desirous of the company of Monsieur Joseph Duvernay. Since I alone in all of France answer to that name, it is I you have been praying for. Well, it's indeed an honor. My husband. Oh, no, 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 there is no need to speak of husbands or wives. No, 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 no. Instead, let me worship at your feet. Monsieur, I think you are a. Uh... Oh, my God! <gasps> Grossly mistaken. Oh, there's no need to play the coquette, huh? <laughs> Let us take the few brief moments we have and find ecstasy in each other's embrace. Come to me, my little mouse. Let me hear you squeak. No, Jimmy, don't! <laughs> Was the Minister of Finance. Monsieur Duvenet. Very same. I tried to tell you, but it all happened so fast. Paris. I told you that dress would bring us grief. Speaking of men. There's a rather dashing one over there, staring at us. He seems quite taken with you. Claire. I take it you two are acquainted? Yes. Yes, we are. Permettez-moi de me présenter. Capitaine Jonathan Wolverton Randall, 8th Company des Dragons de Sa Majesté, le Roi d'Angleterre. À votre service, madame. Analyse de Mariac. C'est un plaisir de faire votre connaissance. Are you in discomfort, Captain? I met with an accident some time ago. I'm sorry, Annelise. Suddenly I'm feeling very unwell. I, I should go. I will call for your husband. No, it's not necessary. Jamie. He's here? Where? You should go. If he sees you, he will cut your throat. That would be a lethal mistake. Drawing a sword in the presence of the king is punishable by death. This is unbelievable. <sighs> the fates are toying with us now, setting our feet on seemingly divergent paths and still somehow converge in the most unlikely of places. Get out of my way. Claire, surely you of all people can step outside the passions of the moment and appreciate the sublime preposterousness of a universe that would guide us to a meeting at the French court. Let go of me. The king. Fuck the king. in the palm of my hand. The ear stuck out just a little. You could see the light through them. The light through her skin as well. 
like the light on a pearl, but still wet from the sea. Her eyes were closed. No lashes yet. They were slanted a bit, like yours. She had wisps of the most beautiful copper hair. All I do like to be beside the seaside. All I do like to be beside the sea. I like to walk along. Prom, prom, prom. So just let me be beside. How long has it been? Since this morning. Sainte-Mère de Dieu. Just a bear. I'm 16. 16 or 60, he just made a very credible attempt at cutting my throat. Who are you, laddie? Hmm? Why are you creeping around at night? Address to a British officer. He's a spy. I'm no spy. I saw the light of your fires, and when I came to investigate, I recognized you as Red Jamie. The unprincipled and traitorous rebel! Not a spy, but conveying with a British officer. Who do you march with? Huh? Scottish barbarian! Leave him alone, you, you sadist! Resisted your advances earlier. But if you let the boy go free, then I will surrender myself to you, you pig. Pig? You may be indifferent to your own welfare, but perhaps you have some concern for this English lady's <laughs> honor. Let her go! Oh. 
I could, Gore. I could lavish her. Huh? Right before your eyes. Huh? And then... Give her to the men to do with what they will. Huh? Oh! All right! Release the lady and I will tell you whatever you wish. Good. Hold her. Until the boy answers my questions. My name is William Gray. Second son, Viscount Melton. And what of the troops you're with? 200 infantry, travelling to Dunbar to join General Cope's army. And I'll warn you, we have heavy armament. 16 carriage-mounted cannon, mortars and muskets, and a company of 30 cavalry. Much obliged for the warning. If what he told us is not true, and cut his throat. Gladly. I give you your life. I hope you use it well. I owe you my life. I should greatly prefer not to. But since you have forced the gift upon me, I must regard it as a debt of honor. I should hope to discharge that debt in the future. And once it is discharged, I will kill you. <laughs> And I must hope, sir, that we do not meet again. A grey does not forget an obligation, sir. Your life is your own. I take no blame for it. I still remember the day, another. The day they blow you back after you've been thrown by that horse. It was a stallion, I think. Too wild for a ten-year-old to ride. You were sorely injured, but... I knew you'd recover. You're my big brother. Nothing hurts you. Or so I believed. But you betrayed me, hmm? Instead of mending, you got worse. And I watched you every day, with your limbs getting more and more twisted. I watched you shrink. And I hated you for it. And with that hate, I wept. I wept more than I ever have before or since. The world was never the same again. You destroyed it. No response. <laughs> Damn your soul, answer me. Answer me. Brother. Brother. So you turn your back on me one final time, eh? And you leave me. 
because you couldn't keep your ass on a bloody horse. How can I go back? To Frank. With that I leave to you. Tell him what you will about me. About us. It's likely he'll know what to hear, but if he does... Tell him I'm grateful. I tell him I trust him. I tell him I hate him to the very marrow of his bones. The buzzing. It's so loud. I'm not ready, Jimmy. I'm not ready. Come with me. Come with me through the stones. No, I can't. You could try. You hear it, right? The buzzing. I don't hear anything, Claire. Even if I could go back through the stones. It's not my place. My destiny lies on Culloden Moor. Where I'll find you. I promise. If I have to endure 200 years of purgatory, 200 years without you, then that is my punishment. That I have earned for my crimes. For I have lied, killed, stolen, betrayed, and broken trust. When I stand before God, I'll have one thing to say to weigh against all the rest. Lord, you gave me a rare woman.
ascension to the presidency was uh, an accident of history, a cosmic joke meant to humble the nation just as America's power had reached its Olympian zenith at the end of the war. And uh, since that sad day when he took up the reins of government, the uh, haberdasher from Missouri has proven himself to be totally unequal to the task of assuming the mantle of Washington, Jefferson, and Lincoln. Obviously, we are both new to these shores, but if I was a betting man, I wouldn't count the Democratic nominee out just yet. <laughs> You're alone in that sentiment, Professor. Certainly the press believes that his defeat in November is all but assured. Perhaps I prefer it to believing we're doomed to the presidency of Thomas Dewey. Well, I read a piece just last week that said the president actually has more support than it appears. I beg your pardon? Well, I was just saying that I read a column in The Globe that predicted victory for the president if he continues to pound away at the Republican Congress as ineffectual, whereas Mr. Dewey only offers the voters platitudes. <laughs> a column in The Globe. <laughs> Professor Randall, you're going to have to pay closer attention to your wife's reading habits. Huh? She keeps reading the Globe, the next thing you know, she'll be trying to get women into Harvard Law. Harvard Medical enrolled female students three years ago. A bone cast in the general direction of Eleanor Roosevelt and her coterie of agitators. My understanding is the girls are barely adequate in their studies. The past experience has shown a few women succeed as physicians. Dean Jackson, I don't believe I mentioned my wife was a combat nurse with the Royal Army Medical Corps during the war. Really? Oh, well, very patriotic, Mrs. Randall. Pitching in in time of crisis and that sort of thing. <laughs> and I'm sure you were happy to resume more important and um, fitting domestic concerns for a lady with the conclusion of the war. Yes, I'm very happy. Of course you are. What young woman wouldn't be at the prospect of impending maternal bliss? Um, have you had uh, an opportunity to examine the prospectus for the uh, spring seminar on the Wars of the Roses? I threw myself into my new role as best I could. But there was still something missing in my life. Once, I had thought I was whole. I'd been able to love a man to bear a child, to heal the sick, and all these things were natural parts of me. But the man I had loved was Jamie, and for a time, I had been part of something greater than myself. I wanted that again. That's why I knew eventually I would need to do something more. Can I help you, miss? Isn't this the anatomy classroom? It is. Are you looking for someone? I have a class about to start. You must be Dr. Sims. I am. And you are? Claire Randall, first year. Oh, yes. The dean informed me there was a woman in this year's incoming class. How very modern. this spot taken? No, it's all yours. Thanks. Joe Abenami. 
Claire Randall. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. All right, gentlemen. Let's begin. Money was wedged behind the bed again. <laughs> I think Bree might be trying to tell us something. Good night. Good night. I'm a terrible person. <laughs> Finally, something we agree on. Ever since my mother told me about Jamie, it's like this wall between us has started to come down. And now the closer we get to finding him, I'm afraid of losing her. I think that just makes you a daughter who cares about her mother. What if something happens to her there? What if she can't come back? Or... What if she doesn't want to? Well, if that makes you a terrible person, then so am I. Part of me doesn't want to find him either, because... Well, once we do, you'll go back to Boston. <laughs> that was... Unexpected. <laughs> Unexpected, yes. What is it? I thought I'd lost hold altogether and pissed myself, but it's all right. Just spilled the yellow pot. Oh. Do you mind? Uh, it's all right. We are married. At least I, I suppose we are. Yes. 
saw you so many times. You came to me so often. In a dream, sometimes. When I was in a fever. I was so afraid and so lonely, I knew I must die. Whenever I needed you, I would see you. Smiling. Your hair curled around your face. Explain. It's a little late for that. I didn't live with her. She and the girls live at Balrigan. I didn't think they'd come here. It was a great mistake, the marriage between Vera and me. With two children, that's... It took you quite a long time to figure that out, didn't it? The last is Anna mine. I'm not the father. Really? That little girl with the red hair? Well, there are other red-headed men in Scotland, Claire. <laughs> Leary was a, a, a widow with two bairns when I wed her. It's been less than two years, and we've lived apart most of that time. Well, I suppose that makes it all right, does it? <laughs> Leary! She, she tried to have me killed. Well, you're the one that told me to be kind to the lass. I told you to thank her, not marry her. And you're not going anywhere. You cannot stop me. You lied to me. You tell me that you never fell in love with anyone else. I did not fall in love. You told me about your son. Why couldn't you tell me about this? Why? 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 Because I am a coward. That's why. I couldn't tell you for fear I would lose you. And I couldn't bear the thought of losing you again. I wanted you so badly that nothing else mattered. I would sacrifice on our family life itself to see you, to lie with you again, even though you left me. to go back. I would have died gladly at Culloden with you. But now you want to blame me for that. Oh, don't blame me for it. You had to go for Brianna's sake. I kind of regret that. But you blame me for coming back. No. Yes. No. God, no. Do you know what it is to live 20 years without a heart? To live half a man and accustom yourself to exist in the bit that's left? Do I know? Do I know how that feels? Yes, you bastard, I know. What did you think that I went back to Frank and lived happily ever after? Oh, sometimes I hoped you did. And sometimes I could see it. Him with you day and night, lying with you, taking your body, holding my bairn, and God, I could... Tell you for it. But I don't have to imagine Leary. Leary? I don't care about Leary and I never have. Oh, so you would marry a woman you don't even want and then just discard her the second you're done? Oh, I'm damned one way or the other. If I felt anything for her, I'm a faithless lecher and if I didn't, I'm a heartless beast. Well, you should have told me. And if I had, she would have turned on your heel and left without a word. But having seen you again, I would do far worse than lie to keep you. <laughs> Get off me! I love you. I'm with you.
I need more room to house the infected men. Once this deck is clean, the sick can convalesce here. Where will the rest of us sleep then? Everywhere else. We need to make use of every inch of space so that no man sleeps touching another one, sick or well. Every surface must be cleaned. Typhoid fever is spread by hands or, or food contaminated by infected urine or feces. Then we'll all die if you hadn't noticed. There's shite everywhere. Thankfully, Mr. Jones. Most of this is vomit. Now let's get to work. Lady doctor giving me orders. What was that? Nothing, sir. It's the captain's orders, Jones. You're to do as the doctor says and pay her every respect. Yes, sir. We need to get more air down here. Foul. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. You mustn't let any man pass in or out without first dipping his hands. Why do we dip our hands in grog? Because we don't have any pure alcohol. What did you just do? Just a taste of grog, madam. I couldn't see it going to waste. The alcohol kills contaminants that spread the fever, Mr. Pound. By dipping your hands in the grog, you clean them, but by putting them in your mouth, you fouled them again. Look, if you had the disease, you could easily spread it to another man by touching his food or, or simply touching his hand. But please, dip them again. Since you were dead. Since you had never leave you again. This is getting me half to death. Must be from the ship, or what's left of it. She's run aground on the mud flats four miles south of here. Are there uh, any survivors? Aye, the folks have gone down to care for him. What a mercy it is that you were saved. I've never seen such a dreadful blow this time of year. I'm Joseph Oliver. This is my wife Patsy and our daughter. <sighs> James Fraser. <laughs> my, uh, my wife. Clear. This arm. Um, this may seem strange, but uh, where are we? We call it Lay Pearl. What we mean to ask is, what island is this? You're not on an island at all. You're on the mainland. In the colony of Georgia. Georgia? America.
keep your eye upriver. You don't want to stare around any logs. All right, lad. It's your turn at the ball. This is harder than it looks. Oh, the count is stronger than I imagined. Will you join me? Sasano. No. Of course. <laughs> well, what's this? Present. Open it. When I, when I went to the goldsmith to have the ruby set. Oh, my God. It's a microscope. Perhaps one day I'll deck you in laces and jewels. I won't be able to give you much, ever. Save for this wee ring. My mother's pearls. You've given me so much more. Brianna, for one. I gave the pearls to her. An heirloom, after all. And this ring is all I need. Twenty-four years ago, I married you, Sasnach. I hope I haven't ever given you cause to regret it. Not for a single day. All right, lad. Any luck with the silversmith, then? No. Afraid nothing else hinders our return home. Fear we'll have to stay another night. <sighs> I did too. Now walk on. Oh, that blacksmith was a tough old coot. I had to offer more than I thought. How much? Fifteen shillings. Did he right? He paid fifteen shillings for a bit. Fifteen additional. Whoa! I paid him twenty-one shillings in all. That was my entire purse. He was leaving for the day. It was the only thing to keep him. meaning of charging a lie. 21 shillings for a bet. A blacksmith! I'm speaking to you. Good. <sighs> I 
never thought he'd lay eyes on you again. <laughs> How? What brought you here? We came in search of settlers. Of land. Three days north. This is Jerry's son, Ian. Ian. This is Murta. <laughs> My godfather. Fine lad. Drives the hard bargain. <laughs> Uncle Jamie told me all about your adventures together. There's so much to tell you. I want to hear every word. No. Are you calling an old coot, eh? Oh, come on. <laughs> Creek. I'd like to leave tomorrow. Sally Ann's in Port. It makes the journey every week or so. You can ask Captain Freeman. Thank you. Brianna. It's you. Oh, thank God. Thank God I found you. You. At no small risk. To leave in Glim, I might add. You weren't supposed to come here. That wasn't the plan. When you called Karen off into bloody nowhere, a plan. No, I would have told you. I just. I didn't know where we stood after the last time we talked. What do you mean you didn't know where we stood? You didn't know how I felt about you. Let's go outside. Close the door. Are you sure? 
do not know how badly I want you. But we're not engaged. That seemed to be very important to you. But the festival you said. I that... said. I should not have all of you or none at all. Have you changed your mind? No. Well then, you have all of me. You'll marry me. How could I say no to a man who pursued me for 200 years? I don't have a ring. I still have the bracelet you gave me. It's the gemstone you used to come through the stones. I have an idea. Do you know what hand fasting is? <laughs> it's, um, it's sort of a temporary marriage. In the Highlands, where, uh, where folk are a long way from the nearest minister, a man and a woman in this time can be promised to one another for a year and a day. At the end of that time... Let's do it. Really? Yes. What do you want here, Lassie? You. Huh. I'm sorry, Lass. I'm a married man. I meant it. I have a wife. Are you... You're Jamie Fraser. Aren't you? I am. Who asks? You have a message for me, lass? My name is Brianna. I'm your daughter. Brianna. Is it true? Don't be troubled. It's all right. I'm sorry. It's all right. You'll have not seen your mother then. She'll be mad with joy. Sassenach?
I'm sticking. Ian, what are you doing? It's all right, Uncle. You're free to go. Let's take Roger. I'm sorry for what we did to you. Brave and can he move? As soon as you can escape, we're all come for you. No. I mean it. I'm staying. Live your life with the Mohawk. I gave them my word. Didn't make me break it. You gave Brianna yours. How can I part with you? Oh, it'll be hard for us both. But you must promise that you'll leave and no come back for me. I've chosen this. Wished me to become a man of worth. You don't again how worthy you are. Remembered. <laughs> something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue, and a silver sixpence <laughs> for your shoe. <laughs> From Marta. I am sorry he can't be here today. As is he. Hey, uh, I'm glad you brought these back with you. <laughs> Hope that maybe you would wear them one day. Imagine it's quite the wedding you maybe dreamt of when you were a wee lass. Not quite. But the best thing, I don't have to imagine you. It is a blessing you came to me. But 
having just gotten your back, must take a few away so soon. Ta. No matter where I am, I will always be your wee girl. Withers! Lee Withers! For God's sake, man. Do you not recognize me? I mean you no harm. You mean me no harm. But you wear the coat of my enemy. I, and your fellows, they, they kill without mercy. Withers, listen, I didn't want to shoot you. Brian Craner is dead. I did what you said, Colonel. I did not waver. betray your mother, no matter who asked. Agosti. Don't be afraid of Alaki. Doesn't hurt a bit to die. Help me. Help me. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's find Granda. Find Granda. Die! Yeah. <laughs> <Hold> me. <laughs> one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Claire, take Jamie and go to the cabin. Now. You lad. Not nice he has any vengeful kin. Oh, we'll eat well tonight. <laughs> In celebration. <laughs> Bree! Roger!
Do not be afraid. Just the two of us now. Some left, still alive. <laughs> you have your vengeance upon the mistress. <laughs> She's bound by an oath. She may not kill for her own life. It is myself that kills for her. And I. And I, milady. Wall. It will shelter us from the traitors when we face them on the battlefield. That depends who you think the traitors are, Charlie. What's wrong with you? Why are you helping? You heard what the governor said. Do what I can to get us out here, so I can serve my time in peace. And if you are a soul worth a damn, since you keep preaching to us about him, you do the same. Him? Lend a hand to help a lowly Jacobite. He'd rather see you fall at his feet and spit at you while you're down there. Aye. Don't tempt me. It doesn't matter. You want to break our spirits, Christy? What's a Jacobite? Whatever a Jacobite, Anik, do! Cop sends the challenge, feed them, pass in Charlie, meet me and you da. I'll earn ye the ear to war if you meet me in the morning. Hey, Johnny Cope, are you walking? Yes, yeah, yeah, there's any kind of us for this one, Christy. Yeah. <laughs> you'll all be damned. I would wait. Began to the goals in the morning. There's many lines, Christy! Upon, he drew his sword Tell us! Scabbard from For the love of God! Me, my merry men, and we'll meet Johnny Cope in the morning. Jerry looked the Lord is upon, my strength and my song. He has become me, my salvation, my and I will exalt Johnny him! In the morning. Come on! Oh! Come on! Dead. A wee bit of tartan for your journey onwards, my dear boy. And where did this come from, you riotous scum? You know it's forbidden. Outlawed. If my superiors caught wind of this, was it the boys? I can't punish him, can I? He's already dead. 
One of you had better speak up, or I'll flog the lot of you myself. It's mine. It's my title. Some justice. Was it not? Many of your parents. To what lengths would you go to protect your innocent children? You never know what you'll be willing to do until... Fergus! No, my lord. Let me be. This is the only way. Marcelli and the children need you. This is for them. Marcelli can marry again. And find a man who can provide for her and her children. Protect Henri Christian. I cannot. You can. You know damn well I can't. Roger saved him. You protect him. I'm nothing. I'm useless. Useless. You kept this family together while I was at Ardsmuir. You helped me in my print shop when I was grieving for Claire. And with this, one hand you made some of the finest whiskey ever pass my lips. You will do so again. You, the only one that can show your son what a useless man like you can achieve now proud he can make his father <laughs> he did again but it's you not what you do or give or provide it's you we need to come home on the phone office I'm not who I once was, my lord. I don't know if I can be that man again. You can. You will.
I'm sorry. Never again. Ian, got to eat an egg. The Creator tells us that for a woman to conceive, the man's spirit must do battle with hers and overcome it. If his spirit is not strong enough, the child cannot take root in the womb. There must be something I can do, but we can try. You have been made Mohawk by an old custom, but your spirit is not Mohawk. What? No. I can you didn't believe that. It is only an excuse because you think I'm no worthy. Return to your own people. Among them, your spirit will be strong. No. Well, Yohawe agrees. Oh. She would never. I must speak with my wife. You have food for three days. You are a good hunter. No. This is... I am flesh of her flesh. Bone of her bone. Is this what you want? It is what must be. Let her speak. Please. It is what must be. Go. Leave. Leave. He was my friend, my brother. He can't how much I loved her. I have fought harder for her. Seems you fought as hard as you could. You're out taking her by force. Would you have left if it had been anti Claire? It's not the same, lad. But anything I have it in me. Rifles to Chief Bart tonight. They'll be expecting a celebration. Right. Don't flash. Sleep now. I'll tell Chief Bart. We'll do it in the morning. My daughter finds herself with child. Well, so what is it I can help you with then? She says she will not name the man save in your presence. In my presence? I don't know why. Martha, how far along are you? All will be well. 
I must say, though. Will you not tell me then, lass? I promise you, you will not suffer for it. Oh, sir. How can you say that to me when you know the truth as well as I do? It was him. What? What? I'm so sorry, Mistress Fraser. He... We... We didn't mean to hurt you. What the hell is she talking about? Your husband's ruined her. The child is his. No, get up! No! Keep your fist to yourself. No need for that now. He's in there! He's made a whore of your daughter! No! You can. This isn't true. What mischief is this you're about? Me and Nagala. How can she speak to me so? How can you be so cruel? Sir, will you be needing anything? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mrs. Buck, but no. It was when the sickness came, when I was here tending to his wife. Tell him, sir. Please tell them the truth. Oh, I mean to. You'll do the same, lass, I assure you. The first time was when Mistress Clare was so ill as we despaired of her life. It wasn't rape. Only him being off his head with the sorrow of it. And me as well. I came into her room late at night to find him at the window, grieving in the dark. And I felt so sorry for him. I asked her to fetch him a wee bite, maybe something to drink. But he'd taken drink already. There was a whiskey bottle in his hand. And I said, no, thank you kindly, and I'd be alone. You'd left. No, I didn't. I'd rather you did say that, that you'd be alone. But I couldn't bear to see you in such straits. And I know it was forward and unseemly, but I did pity you so much. I, I came and touched him, put my hand on his shoulder only to comfort him. But he turned then. And put his arms around me all of a sudden and grasped me to him. And then he... He took me... against the wall whilst you lay sleeping. So great was his need. You didn't see anyone at all? No. Doesn't make sense. You must have seen something or someone. I was busy in the surgery. Thought I saw Martha coming towards the house. She may have knocked, but... And you didn't answer the door? Why did you go outside then? With a knife? Pruning knife, for God's sake. I was going to the garden. What are you implying, lad? Your wife stands before us up to her elbows in blood. I don't think we're implying anything. I told you. By the time I found Malva, whoever did this, they were gone. She was already dead. But I had to try and save the baby. You believe me, don't you? Was it swift? I want to hear it from a healer's lips. How long would it have taken for her to die? If you're asking me if she suffered, then... Tell me. How long? With the cut to her throat. It would have been quick. No time to pray for forgiveness, then. A 
short prayer that would have made her right with God. We'll bury them out in the woods. We will not. Can't bury a whore and an illegitimate child beside God-fearing men and women. She was your daughter. He was your bastard son. He is not. Whoever he belongs to. We'll see Malva and your weak grandson laying to rest properly. Please, Mr. Christie. What? Have the angels weeping and demons rejoicing that a sinner has been buried in holy ground over my dead body? No. Over mine. With Malva and the Bairn to be buried on my ground at the ridge till be after her funeral in a consecrated grave. Have I made myself clear? What are we going to stand up and say about her, eh? That Martha Christie was full of life and light, and that there was a fire in her eyes. And when I held her tiny baby, I felt that same light in him. But... The state of the body. I'll take care of her. We'll gather at the meeting house in a few days. My son-in-law will make this service. Shoot. Hand me that phone in peace. All right, I will. Arrest her! Shot me. I did. And I'll bloody do it again if you don't get out of here. South and east. Let them think your size in here, Wies. All right. Go now, Claire. Surrender, Fraser.
Freedom! 